Hi, welcome to Church Around the Corner. I'm Pastor Billy Flowers from Houston Road Church, and it is my honor to have a great friend of mine, James Smith, with me today. Uh, today we're going to talk about a special subject called Intentional Diversity. We're going to address some things today that I think the church needs to, uh, James needs to discuss and, uh, and, and approach from a biblical standpoint about how important it is to include everyone in the kingdom of God and not just what's comfortable, but everyone mm -hmm. and bring them into a knowledge of Jesus Christ. Um, I want to I tell you something. I was reading on Dr. Martin Luther King's interview from April 17, 1960. And I know that people, uh, when you talk about diversity, they, they often go back to the comment he made. But I want to read this to you, Middle George. I want you to hear what he said. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, I think it is one of the tragedies of our nation, one of the most shameful tragedies that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning is one of the most segregated hours, if not the most segregated hour mm -hmm. in Christian America. Now, he said this April 17th. 1960, on the TV show, Meet the Press. The nation was watching when he made this profound statement. And, and, it's, and it's crazy because you and I were talking about what were we going to share on this first church around the corner uh, that we were going to do as a church, as a ministry. Mm -hmm. And we were, middle Georgia, we were struggling with what are we going to do? What are we going to share uh, that is going to make an impact in our community? And as the Lord began to lay this in my, in my spirit about a month ago, I began to pray and seek God's face. And when I began to study this interview, I realized last Tuesday was 58 years ago when he made this statement. Isn't that amazing how God's timing yes. is always on point and how he tries to bring us uh, to a place of, of accountability and a place of responsibility in the kingdom by using past events. Now, here, here's the thing. 58 years ago, last Tuesday, he said these words, these resounding words that penetrated the hearts of every American, and since then, not much has changed. That is the shame. That's what we're going to talk about today is why haven't we changed as much as we should have? I'll tell you why, James, mm -hmm. because diversity has taken on a whole new meaning. What we thought was a black and white issue uh, and, and by the way, he's not on here because he's a black gentleman and I'm a white guy. No, that's not why he's here. He is a fellow minister, a fellow laborer in our church. He yes. helps me. He ministers with me. Uh, we're friends. And, but I wanted his perspective because he can share some things that I don't know about when it deals with diversity. But here's the thing. This thing's gotten worse yes. since 1960. Diversity has changed from skin color and race and ethnicity it's changed to gender. Mm -hmm. It has changed to lifestyles, sexual preferences. It has changed to the atheist and the agnostic. Everything has changed uh, about diversity. And our churches, I believe this. We talked about this yesterday. Yes. I believe our churches should represent the community we live in. Yes. If they're not representing the community we live in, uh, just what is the statement of our church? Now, James, I know it's not the first question we're going to talk about, but I want to throw this at you real quick. Um, what do you think a church should do when it's trying to represent the kingdom of God in, when it's in a community that maybe is um, entirely uh, white or Caucasian? What, what should that church do to try to infiltrate and make their church diverse? How should they handle that? I think they should reach out into different places the uh, highways and hedges. Yes. Uh, it's just not around the territory where the church is in. It's, it should be an outreach. Yes. Um, what we should be doing mm -hmm. uh, to reach the, the community, to reach the, um, the fellow man and letting them know that we love them, mm -hmm. that we are here for them uh, because we want to make a statement uh, to Middle Georgia that we are loved by God. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten yes, son. Yes. So we need to be able to give to those needs to be loved because he first loved us. So we got to love each other. Yes, absolutely. Here's the thing. I wanted to define intentional diversity so people would know. So I want to read to you what, what my definition is. Like This is Billy one and one uh, Intentional diversity is when we choose to integrate our ministries, our churches, with mm -hmm. everyone period. 
black, white, Hispanic, atheist, agnostic, homosexual, heterosexual, Asian, Muslim, Baptist, Pentecostal, everyone. The kingdom of God is made up of so many different uh, uh, people, but yes. yet we isolate ourselves and we separate ourselves from one another. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think it's intentional. I do want to say that. I, do, I don't want to come on, on, on the air and, uh, and seem so um, pious and religious and, and blast people because I don't think a lot of it's intentional. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I coach high school baseball and I help do that. And during baseball season, I am surrounded by baseball people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have I have black kids playing for me. I have uh, kids with Hispanic background. I have yes. Caucasian kids. It, it just doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The thing we have in common at that moment, James, is we're baseball people. Yes. So I reach out to baseball people. Mm -hmm. And I think even in our jobs, if we work at the base or if we uh, work in the school system or if we're in construction like yeah. you, mm -hmm. you're, you are prone to reach into that community or into those people, and that's okay. But if we're not careful, we will build our church, our ministries, and our, and our temples of faith with people who are like us in yes. one, one, way, one way or the other, and, and the diversity thing will be put on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at our church and we'll go, wow. Now I know some people are saying, uh, why would you want a homosexual to come to your church? Well, how else will they hear the gospel? Except they have a preacher. Yes. Uh, why, why can't people, all people, mm -hmm. feel welcomed and loved in the house of God? Yes. We should all feel, I mean, we should all feel like it's home. Yes, accept it. Yes, and House to Road Church is a church where we're intentionally putting it out there. Mm -hmm. We want you to come to church. We want you to be a part of our fellowship. Yes. We don't care where you're from. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. All I want you to do is meet my Jesus. I yes. am convinced mm -hmm. if you meet my Jesus, yes. he can change your life. Yes, he can. I am, I am totally convinced. Listen, I want to read you something. The, the rest of the interview, I really don't have to uh, read it. I can tell you. When I read through the interview that Dr. King had mm -hmm. with Meet the Press, and it was a great clip, a great, you can Google it, read it. It, it blessed my heart. Um, one of the reporters asked him the question. They said, Dr. King, is your church in Atlanta segregated. He said, no, it's not. I went, mm -hmm. wow. But then I read the rest of his statement. He said, we are segregated, but we're not segregating. Mm -hmm. He said, we welcome all people to come yes. to our church. We want everyone to come. And you know what? That's, that's my position today as a pastor in, in this century, in this era of ministry, because since I've been in ministry, things have changed a lot. Yes. Uh, used to even let, let's just break it down to to religious folk. The Baptists would stay with the Baptists. The Pentecostals with the Pentecostals. The Methodists with the Methodists. Mm -hmm. The Catholic with the Catholic. Mm -hmm. But now, I'm telling you, churches everywhere are being blended with people because they just want Jesus. Yes. But we still have this issue: mm -hmm. intentional diversity. And and like I said, I don't think we want to be exclusive, but I do believe things happen in our lives that that make us um, kind of prone to sticking with the people we're most familiar with. Mm -hmm. So I got a question for you, James. Here's okay. a question, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Ready? Ready. All right, here we go. What does it mean to you, James, as a black man to hear a church make the statement, we are making our church intentionally diverse? What does that do for you? To me, that's mean welcome, welcome anyone. The doors are open yes. for anyone that comes in. It doesn't matter who you are, mm -hmm. and what you have done. It's being accepted for who you are. Yes. So you have to draw the line in the sand. Yeah. And say, look here, we love you. We accept you for who you are. Well, here's what Dr. King said. Here's what he said. He said, I definitely think the Christian church should be integrated. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It's, it's a powerful statement. He said, and any church that stands against integration and has a segregated body, listen, this is powerful now, mm -hmm. is standing against the spirit and the teachings of Jesus Christ. And it fails to be a true witness. Scripture tells us, it, it's very clear, uh, that all men are created yes. equal. Yes. And every single person, everyone, can be a child of God and receive a full measure of grace and blessing and hope mm -hmm. and, and, and heaven. Yes. Every one of us can do that. We can look toward the Bible to learn how to love people, mm -hmm. but until we put it into practice, yes. 
we're just, we're just reading uh, the word and we're not being doers mm -hmm. of the word. Here's what Malachi said. Malachi said in chapter two, verse 10, do we not all have one father? Did not one God create us? That's a powerful question. James, yes, what does the Lord's prayer say? Our father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Yes. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors. Lead us not yes. into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Yeah. Well, the, the powerful part of that prayer is it says, Our, our Father, Father. Yes. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. It's including all of us. Yes. And I think the Christian church, I think the church struggles with understanding that even the atheist is a child of God. Yes, he The is. Bible says all things that were created were created by him. All things, everything, James, mm -hmm. our, our Amen. Father who art in heaven, hallowed yes. be thy name. Amen. And then the, the transition wants to take place. Thy kingdom Amen. come, thy will be done. For his kingdom to come, listen, yes. our kingdom must go. Yes. For his will to take place, our will must die. Yes. Intentional diversity in the church today means we have got to be willing to let go of things of the past that have defined us as who we are yes. and allow the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to map our destiny. What do you think about that? To map our destiny. That, that's his will be done. Yes. Not our will. To map our destiny is for his will to be done. And it says it in Jeremiah 29. Mm. His plan and his purpose. Yes. It's not my plans and it's not my purpose. It's his plan and his purpose. I know sometimes the Lord has spoken to me and challenged me. And, uh, and, it, and it scares me at times to know that maybe my plan at the moment wasn't his, that I've gotten into myself. And maybe, maybe I got one-sided hanging around my baseball people, mm -hmm. inviting baseball people mm -hmm. instead of, treating the lady at Hardy's yes. like she should be treated with respect at the drive through window. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. or, or sharing with the person on the street. You know, here, here's where we're at, church. To be diverse means we have to go beyond, go beyond what we are and the certain people we hang with. It's got to be us being willing mm -hmm. to incorporate other ethnic groups, the diverse economic groups, mm -hmm. and let everyone feel that they are equally important Yes. And the presence and the sight of God. That's the role of the, that's the challenge of the church. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. That's the challenge of the church. Listen, we're so glad, Middle Georgia, you're here with us today, joining us for this. Listen, don't go away. Be right back. We're going to take a short break and continue with intentional diversity. God bless. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not consider myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3 verses 12 to 14. Welcome back to Church Around the Corner. I'm Pastor Billy Flowers, and this is my great friend, James Smith. And we're going to continue with our topic, Intentional Diversity. Uh, we took a short break. Now we're back at it. So we want you to stay with us while we finish up this program. In the first part, we talked a little bit about Dr. King and his comment about the 11 o'clock hour being so segregated in America mm -hmm. uh, in the Christian church and how that we need to change that. Mm -hmm. And since 1960, when he made that comment, not a lot's changed. However, diversity has changed in the, in the, in the church. 
diversity has not been now so much as white and black in color mm -hmm. or ethnicity. It includes uh, economic factors. It, it includes the agnostic, the atheist. It includes uh, so many different things that we didn't really deal with back then, but we're dealing with now. I, I want to share something with you real quick before we get back into our, our conversation. Colossians 1 and 16 says this, For in him all things were created. Yes. I mean, that, that just sums it up. Mm -hmm. Things in heaven and on earth, right. visible yes. and invisible, yes. whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things, listen, all things, James, yes. have been created through him, and here's the power, and for him. Yes. Everyone on the planet, everything on the planet, every piece of technology, even the ability to transmit this program right now mm -hmm. was created by God for God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Yes, that's powerful. Why can't we take that mindset into the church, James? Why can't we get that level of thinking in our churches? Why are we so one-sided in our churches? We won't get out the way and let God have his way. Mm. Um, and when you're dealing with the flesh and the spirit, it's basically the flesh wants control instead of the spirit having control. Yes. Yes. Back in the day, look, back in the day, it was primarily about race and color. And, and, and those are easy to deal with. Look, let me tell you something. Uh, I, I'm white, he's black. But inside both of us is what? The same blood, blood. red blood. Yes. If we were to... He had a wild idea. I'm gonna tell you, Middle George. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna rat him out. He had a wild idea that we was gonna prick our fingers, and and I'm not about that. I don't want to bleed. I don't want a needle. I don't want none of that. But I would have done it to prove we bleed the same. same. You bleed the same. Listen, yes. you bleed the same as an atheist. Yes. You bleed the same as a Muslim. You bleed the same as uh, the criminal on death row. You bleed the same as the child that's just been born. We are all God's creation, and you yes. know what? We all bleed the same. Yes. So why can't we understand that in the house of God, mm -hmm. we gotta bring all this together. Yes. We have to bring people together. Yeah. And, and Jesus tried to tell us in Mark, mm -hmm. but we struggle with this. I, I wanna read this, and we'll take it a minute, okay. I'm gonna let you talk. You know us preachers, we'll take the whole time if you let us. Mark 12 and 29. And go read some more. But it says, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, Of all the commandments, he's asking Jesus now, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? What a question. Yes, sir. Jesus said, The most important one is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Man, what a powerful statement of love. Yes, it is. Love the Lord. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Here's number two. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Self. Listen, we love ourselves. Yes. I, I love myself so much. I Listen, I get in the mirror. I love myself. I may not be pretty, but I love myself. You love yes, yourself, I don't you? I love myself. I, yes. I know them clothes you wear. You love yourself. I love myself. You won't point with them red shoes. And red, <laughs> I'm telling you. Yes. But you love yourself. Yes, sir. But here's what the story, how the story goes. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well said, teacher. The man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifice. It's mm -hmm. the most important Thing yes. that we love people. Yes. Here he goes. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, Jesus said this to him. He said, you're not far from the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. What is Jesus saying to our churches today, James? How close are we or how far away are we from the kingdom of God? How far are we away from the kingdom of God? In respect to loving people. Man. We can love ourselves, mm -hmm. but we can't love others. We yes. struggle. Yes, we struggle with that. We do. And it's a, it's a battle that we deal with every day, but we got to put action with it. If I say I love you, I got to put action with it. You got to show me. I got to show you. You got to prove it. Yes. And Jesus done that by dying on the cross. That's yes. how much he loves us. Yes. Yes. We Listen, we, 
we do a ministry downtown with homeless ministries, and, and we go down there, and our college and career, and our people really pour into that community. And you know what? They can recognize a phony from a mile away. Yes. They know if you're legitimately loving them or not. They mm -hmm. know. They can read you. Talking to a guy yesterday up in Dahlonega, a mm -hmm. counselor that deals with meth addicts. He says a meth addict can spot a phony a mile away. They know if you're for real. Church, let me tell you something. The reason we're not diverse is because people know if we really want them there or not. Yes. Right? That's right. That's what, right. One factor about our church, and you can, you can quantify this statement, you can qualify, we love people. Yes, y'all do. I feel love. Y'all, you better say we. Yeah, we. <laughs> we. I mean, we, everyone we showed me and my wife love when we came there. Listen, I got a question for you. Okay. You, we love your wife. We love your family. Chris, his son, actually was the reason they came to our church. Chris came and found the Lord and, and started telling his mom and dad about us. And they were driving two hours to go to church up That's to Covington, correct. Georgia. Yes. And, and they came one time and felt love. But here's the thing. My friend is black. His wife is white. Mm -hmm. And she's a beautiful woman. Pat, we yes, love Miss Pamela to death. But tell me some of the stuff you dealt with as a couple going to some churches. Um... You can break, be real, come be on. Be real, I mean, they look at the uh, outer appearance when, when they do look at me. They, I guess they felt like I'm the stereotype. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that, you know, I look or whatever. But at the same time, they got to become to know my heart as, as her parents as well. It, it wasn't being accepted by them as well until they got to know me. So going to church with her, the church that she grew up in, you know, it was all Caucasians in there. Mm. And you know, and I sat uh, on the back row mm -hmm. at that time because you never know what could actually happen. <laughs> you don't so, know what could take place. Exactly, but yeah. uh, God, God has yeah. um, made a way for me and her where he uses me and her to tear down walls of, um, of the color or racism uh, that is going on. And you know, that's why, when, first time I met him, I told you, I said, James, you're here, this is home. I didn't mm. even know him. He came to our church. I hugged his neck. When I hugged his neck, I, I loved him. I said, man, you're home. Yes. This is where you belong. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I had such a connection in my spirit with him. And here's mm -hmm. the crazy thing about that. We knew at that moment that you were supposed to be there, and we didn't know why. We didn't know why. My wife and I had no idea. Uh, they have come alongside us and helped us in ministry. Yes. But when he began to tell me a story that they're used to tear down walls, I knew right then what God was doing. Yes. Listen, middle Georgia, we've, we've got to... I believe Middle Georgia is going to be the area where a great revival is going to erupt. Yes, it's going to take amen. place, and it's not just going to stay here. It's going to spread across the nation and go around the world. God is positioning Middle Georgia for revival. But let me tell you something. We've got to get out of the way of God and allow Him to teach us to love people. Yes. That homeless person on the street may be the next Billy Graham. Yes. He may be the one to tell the story of, of redemption and, and being set free, mm -hmm. and here we are excluding Him. Listen, mm -hmm. when you go to SunTrust Park, and you go mm -hmm. see a Braves game and you buy a ticket. Can you pick and choose who you sit by? No, I can't. Why? Not. Why? What's, why? Why? Because can't it's you? whoever seat. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have a, 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 just a seat that I pay for. I don't own all those seats around me. So I can't pick and choose who sits by me. It could be uh, a, 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 a drunk. It could be uh, It could be anybody. It, it can be anybody. Yeah. I know you're an LSU fan, and we yes. don't forgive you for that. You're from Louisiana. God bless you. Uh, welcome to Dog Nation, by the way. <laughs> but uh, even if you go to LSU game, I've been to that stadium. Mm -hmm. You can't pick and choose. No, you cannot. It's a whosoever will. Yes. Whoever sits beside you is who you sit by. Yes. So the mentality of the church has got to change. We've got to start creating the whosoever mentality. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Yes. In battling intention, being intentional in battling diversity and becoming diverse, and I guess maybe not battling diversity, but battling indifference. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be diverse. We we welcome diversity. Uh, we've got to do a couple of things. We've got to change our thinking. Yes. We've got to realize that we all belong to God. That's number one. Exactly. Right. Yes. We got to love God and we got to love our neighbor. Mm -hmm. That's right. We got to do that. We've we got, got to, to reach out and do that. What does John 3.16 tell us? For God. That's, that, that's where it all hinges right there. Right. If we can understand that whosoever mentality from that point on, yes. tell us, what does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only one, his one and only begotten son that whosoever, 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 mm. that's, that's me because I need him. Each and every day. That's I'm a whosoever. Yes. Uh, my wife is a whosoever. Yes. My children is a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. That needs yes. him. That needs a savior. 
Yes. So the people that is out here, they need a savior. Yes. Whosoever that would come. Mm. The Bible says if we just believe on him, yes. we'll have everlasting life. Let me tell you something. If you're bound in your sin, and you don't know where to go because everywhere you go, you feel judgment and you don't feel love. Let me tell you something. Houston Road Church welcomes you. Many churches welcome you. They, they open their arms. You give us a chance to love you. Churches, listen to me. Pastors, if you're listening right now, become the church that will open its arms to people of all races, all beliefs. It doesn't matter yes. if they're Muslim or if they're Catholic or if they're Baptist or Pentecostal or, or if they're an atheist or agnostic. Open the door and love them. It doesn't matter if we're homosexual or heterosexual. Yes. We need the love of God to help us. And I'm telling you, get them in the presence of the Lord, their lives will be changed. Yes. And then we do that by loving God first and loving our neighbor second. Because whether you like it or not, they're your neighbors. Yes. We, we cohabitate on the planet. Uh, we can't, unless you're rich enough to buy an island mm -hmm. and totally separate <laughs> yourself from the rest of the world, mm -hmm. you're going to share life with somebody. Yes. When we're doing life together at House right. Road Church, exactly. we want you to be a part of our church. Our, our, our belief uh, is that we love Jesus, we serve Him, we share His love, and we believe if we can share His hope and His gospel, that lives will be forever more changed. Yes. That is called being intentional. Yes. Intentional diversity mm -hmm. is being willing to make a change for the better. Yes. To make a change that will take us from this level of living mm -hmm. into eternity and to dwell in his kingdom. Yes. In my house are many mansions, yes. many, rooms. many rooms. In my mansion, there's many rooms. If it weren't true, he'd have told us. Yes. But he tells us of hope, love, mm -hmm. peace. I'm telling you guys, reach out to the person that's not like you. Reach out to your neighbor. I challenge you today to reach into your community with the hope and the gospel of Jesus. You know, this has been a great church around the corner, James. Thank That's you it. for being uh, my guest. We it's thank WGNM for letting us be here. Uh, Houston Road Church is off the Harley Bridge Road area, 6055 Houston Road. Come be with us. We'll love you so many ways. You'll like one of them. God bless you. Have a great, great day. And be intentional serving the Lord. God bless. Hey, if you're a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you are interested in TV ministry, we want to partner with you through Church Around the Corner. It's a great way to start a TV ministry or see if you're interested. I need you to call me at 478-474-8400 or email me gm at wgnm.com. Together, we can do great things for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I look forward to hearing from you.